Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester, and welcome back to my channel. That's Dylan, the little fatty. Um, we recently discovered that he's been using my illness and busyness <laughs> to con us into feeding him twice because Sam takes over feeding him when I don't feel well or when I'm really busy. And so Sam's just been feeding him a lot recently. And then he would come to me and I'd be like, oh snap, I need to feed the corgi. And he was actually asking me for his second dinner. And I'm not sure how often this happened. I'm not sure what he got away with, um, but he regrets nothing. But now he's on a diet and we're playing fetch all the time. So he probably thinks he's not being punished at all. Um, but yeah, he's very smart, but very lazy and uses his intelligence to be more lazy and more of a glutton, which honestly, if I wasn't a human being with some sense of morality, I would probably do the same thing. So anyway, enough about philosophy and corgis. Let's talk about books. Um, so I have been running around to different indies um, and then also of course book outlet is always in my life. Um, so I have some books to show you today. Um, so let's go over some books that I just bought at random bookstores around the country because apparently I travel now, but even. All right, first up is Gideon the Ninth, first edition, Black Pages. Yes, okay, so I really was very excited about this and I started it and I, I struggled to get into it because I was listening to it and I didn't have this copy at the time but inside there's like a cast of characters and there's more details and stuff so I feel like if you had the book with you or if you're reading a book the problems I had getting into the world building would not be a problem right but then it became wonderful and I'll review it later but like oh it's so good so of course I had to run out and buy a copy because I wanted these pages these black edged pages that glorious so I will uh, you know, review this later, but we also have to look at, yeah, that's amazing. So the next one is called Harrow the Ninth, and it's coming out in 2020. I'm already very excited for it. That's so good. It's so good. So next one I found um, on a bookstore crawl. Um, I've been trying to find all of these editions of Julia Alvarez, and this is in the time of the butterflies. Um, and so there's a third one called Yo, I believe, and that's the last one I need in the reissue trilogy from Algonquin. Um, I have no idea what these books are about, but they're by Julia Alvarez, and my friend Lupita says go read them, and I say yes. Of course I will, because that's what you do when Lupita tells you to read books, <laughs> like, obviously. So a book that I did not intend to go and buy, um, per se, I had a gift card. And so I didn't know that this book had a very steep sticker price, but I feel like it was worth it in many ways. Um, but I went and while I was at my book club, found this book, These Truths by Jill Lepore that Amanda Nelson told me to read when we were on a panel together. Well, and basically told everyone to read, let's be honest. And so I went forth and I bought it and it happens to be a signed first edition with the like signed first edition plate page thing. And everything. So this is gonna be my nonfiction November TBR the entire holiday. <laughs> just go forth. It's like 900 pages and my arm hurts just holding it up. Um, but I'm so happy I bought it because if a giant history nerd who loves books and works in books tells you to go read a history book, you go read that history book. Um, I also picked up a book that's supposed to be like Percy Jackson for adults, um, but like on Mayan uh, mythology, folklore, etc. So this is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Marino Garcia. And I just heard Jen, uh, from Book Riot talk about this book on Get Booked. And so I picked this one up because the cover captivated me and I love fun books that are basically Percy Jackson for adults. So like Rebecca Roanhorse is also in this category. Um, so I'm very excited about this one. It looks, oh, it's so beautiful. It also has God of the Dead in the description. So, you know, so while I was in DC, um, I went to a used bookstore and you guys in DC will already know the one I'm talking about, but it, it's stuffed to the gills. And I found a signed first edition of Middle Science by Jamie Attenberg. And I love Jamie Attenberg. I met her and Sid, Sid is fabulous. That's her dog. He's a puggle. He has this like grouchy old man face that's adorable. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so this is one of her most famous books that she's written and this is out from Grand Central. I've been wanting to read it. I want to read this and St. Maisie. I haven't read those yet, but I definitely want to pick up the hardbacks because all my other Jamie Attenbergs are hardback. They need to match, guys, um, even if they don't match in design. But yeah, so that's this one. And I've seen this at Book Outlet several times in hardback and print. I just never picked it up. So I now have a signed version. So that's cool. That's cool with me. 
I joined a book club and so at my local indie. So one of them is this one. Uh, she called me a woman. I dare use queer women speak. This is an anthology um, of essays. I read the first couple and it's very interesting. Yeah, I, I don't even know like how to describe it, but if you have not read anything by queer women in Nigeria, obviously this would be a great place to start because you have an entire novel list of them. Um, there's also Train, which is uh, a novel inspired by Hidden History by Danny M. Cohen, and this covers uh, the groups of people who were also put into prison camps during World War II, um, including like Romani people, people with disabilities, either mental or physical. Uh, uh, you have also uh, homosexuals, and uh, there was uh, people who were married to Jewish people as well, I believe. So it's like all the groups that were also put in there that are often not talked about when we talk about the Holocaust, that it covered a lot of different people groups and different things. So that's covered in this book, light reading, as you can imagine. Um, and this one, I love the cover. This one says, fierce femmes and notorious liars, a dangerous trans girl's confabulous memoir by Kai Cheng Tom. And this is one, all of the things. It won the Lambda, cool. And the Writer's Trust of Canada. So apparently the author's Canadian. Cool. Didn't know that. The other one is one I recommended, which is We Are Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby, and no one is surprised that I recommended that one. No one. It's like most on-brand recommendation. So next are the books that I picked up from Book Outlet. So I picked up Jane Harper's The Lost Man. This is not related to her Aaron Folk series, which I didn't know heading into this, but it's my favorite book of hers so far ever so if I were to ever like pare down some of my author series like I own the books of several different authors like all the way through um if I were to pare down this would be the one I would keep like it's so good it's worth the hype guys all right and this one's also this one's from Tor and this is Charlie Jane Anders the city in the middle of the night and this is about a world where half the planet or area, I don't know, is in sunshine and half is at night. Um, and I heard her read from this uh, in 2018 uh, when she was teaching in Spartanburg. She was teaching at a science fiction fantasy, like teens writing camp kind of thing. So anyway, I, I thought it sounded pretty cool. Also the cover, I love the cover. So I picked up this one being a food person and this is the Pot Liquor Papers. I'll say that five times fast. Uh, a Food History of the Modern South by John T. Edge. And this is a book, I mean, what it says on the tin. Food history in the South. I live in the South. I like food. Yes, please. I also got one of those for Autumn because, of course. So uh, I talked about Jacqueline Woodson in my last video, I believe. And so this one um, I picked up so that when I go to the see her, even when she comes to Greenville, I can get the signed as well. And this is Jacqueline Woodson's Another Brooklyn. I read it when it came out. Gorgeous. So one of my favorite horror writers, Stephen Graham Jones, uh, he wrote this novella mapping the interior and won awards won all i don't know he did a great job <laughs> according to all of the critics so i was like of course i need to read this and i didn't realize that the audiobook was available on audible for fairly inexpensive but i found this on book outlet and was like of course i'm picking up a copy it's stephen graham jones i support him to the day i die now um because i love mongrels so much um, but yeah, so those are the books that I picked up uh, from Book Outlet and I purchased at various indie bookstores across the South, you know, like you do. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much for watching. I am now going to put these away and we will get to reviewing some of them that I've already read very soon. But next time we'll talk about SIBA and all of the exciting books that will be coming out in the near future that you definitely need to pick up. All right, I'll see you next one, guys. Bye. <music>